Hello to your all students. Namaskar and welcome to Physio Trends channel. This is me, Physio Prem Shah, and today in this video, I am going to explain you all about the orthopedic assessments in physiotherapy. Yes, definitely, the explanation of this orthopedic assessment is very vast. But once you have understood the concept of this assessment, the application will be very easier. and you can make definite diagnosis about your patients so make sure that you are following full video and understanding the whole concepts about the orthopedic and assessment and make a proper diagnosis for your patients so let's begin with orthopedic assessment in physiotherapy so friends orthopedic assessment of physiotherapy we take for all the patients who have approached us to understand what is the causative uh, mechanism for that particular condition and what will be our treatment plan so initially we start the assessment with demographic data in demographic data we take date of the assessment which is very important to know and compare between two assessments on different dates next is name of the patient this information is required to address the patient the third is age of the patient just to identify and rule out age related conditions of that patient we take age then gender specific condition so that in certain conditions there are more common in female candidates certain conditions more common in male candidates so to identify that we take this gender specific uh, information in demographic data next one is occupation occupation is taken for two reasons number one is to identify occupation related injuries to the patient and number two is while treating the patient we have to make sure that patient is able to perform functional activities according to his or her functional so and occupational status next is address of the patient again this is important to know because we should know that how much time patient is taking to travel from their home to the clinic or wherever the physiotherapy setup is there and that again determines the treatment because if the traveling time is more patient is having back pain then there are chances that back pain may increase the symptoms may increase because of the traveling time so we can advise the patient to consult somewhere near to the uh their house or apartment physiotherapy center after the demographic data the next part is chief complaint of the patient now chief complaint is the segment where patient gives the information about their problems in their own words and exact same words we are noting down in the assessment format now why it has to be taken in patient's own words because first thing is patient doesn't know any medical terminologies and second thing is in their own words we can understand it in a better way that what will be the mechanism of injury for the patient and what are the different factors which are affecting their functional status because of that particular condition after the chief complaint we move forward to the history component history can be of different types in that first type of history as you can see is present history now present history in that all these points we have to include which is allowed to narrate the history of the patient that why this particular condition has happened how it has happened what is the mechanism of injury uh, that patient is uh, feeling right now what is the mode of onset whether it is sudden onset whether it is gradual onset how is the condition right now in compared to when it started like whether it is improved whether it is stationary whether it is deteriorating and whether any muscular weakness is present or not so all these informations have to be included in present history about the present condition of the patient once this information is collected the next part what we have to take is past medical history of the patient now students this can be divided in two parts again it can be only past history and medical history a uh, separate part but i have included both of them together because both of them are almost similar so in past medical history we get to know about patients any uh, past medical conditions if they have faced for example any past uh, trauma or injury which is relevant with the current situation that we are going to mention 
again any medical conditions that patients are having like blood pressure diabetes uh, then uh, cardiac problems or thyroid all these problems since when they are having how long they are facing this situation all this information we will include in the past medical history next will be surgical history in this apart from the present condition of the patient if any other surgery in the history patient has faced so that information we are going to include in this surgical history if possible we also have to mention date of that surgery which has been occurred in the previous part which is in past and also what surgery has been performed the accurate information how much ever we get to know from the patient's medical files that we have to include in the surgical history then family history whatever the hereditary conditions as well as consanguinity if it is present in the patient's uh, history that we have to mention because there are certain conditions which can occur in the hereditary as well as it can be because of the consanguinity most of the congenital conditions can be occurred because of the consanguinity that is why it is important to take in the family history next is personal history personality history includes all the bad habits of the patient which patient has been continuing it can be cigarette smoking it can be alcohol consumption it can be tobacco chewing and all this information along with how many number of days they are taking it in a week then uh, since how long they are taking it all these details also has to be taken so that we can understand that what can be the bad effects of all this personal habits or personal history next part of the history is socio economical history socio economical history includes the status of the patient socially as well as economically now this part is very important because social history gives us information that what is the social activities of the patient so that while treating once the treatment is over we have to make sure that patient is uh, decently and equally socially active after the treatment as well as according to the economical condition of the patient we have to make sure that patient will be able to afford the treatment protocol for the whole duration and according to that we have to plan out the treatment apart from this environmental history is one of the factor which we take sometimes which is relevant with the patient's own environment wherever the patient is staying so basically if patient is staying in the apartment flat or bungalow how many stairs patient has to climb every day because if patient is having any conditions in the lower limb then we have to make sure that uh, whether patient has lift in their apartment or flat uh, or flats or patient has another facilities for reaching to their home or not same wise other factors like uh, toileting facilities whether it is indian toilet whether it is western toilet whether their bed height is uh, whether uh, it is more it is less because if patient has to transfer from the wheelchair to the bed whether patient will be able to do it or not so all these factors we have to take in the environmental history so that according to which we can plan out our physiotherapy protocol so once the history part is over we continue with the observation now this is the point from where the physiotherapist have to be very conscious about their patients all the behaviors how they are performing the activities and that is why few points are given that what all things have to be observed in the observation part the first is general condition of the patient whether the patient's condition is poor good or fair also in medical terms we can tell it as ectomorphic uh, mesomorphic and endomorphic which is again relevant with the bmi of the patient whether the patient is thin moderately built or uh, obese so this conditions or this observation can make us understand about the patient's current condition and relevance with the patient's body or general appearance next is if there is any wasting muscle wasting uh, present in the patient's body that we have to observe next is edema so swelling can be present because of the inflammation as well as in the chronic condition so that we just have to identify whether any swelling Uh, is present in patients affected area or not whether any bandages or scars are present if present then what is the area which area they are present and what is the extent extent of the scar that also we have to notice in the observation attitude of the limb now this is very important factor that we have to take in whichever the position patient is if patient is in supine lying position then in supine lying position what is the attitude of the affected limb that we have to write down if supa if not supine standing position then standing position or else sitting position any position patient is 
uh, in present that particular position we have to find out the attitude of the limb next is type of gait we just have to observe that how patient is walking if there is any abnormality present or not not so that according to which we can continue our examination part of the assessment next is presence of any bony counters now bony counters is nothing but prominence of the bones in certain areas now that commonly you will find out in the pelvic area knee area ankle as well as shoulder acromion process so if there is more prominence on particular one side that we have to observe in the observation part then deformities if any deformities because of injury or because of overuse of that particular part of the muscle or uh, part of the body that we have to identify and note down in the observation component moving forward after the observation we come to know the about the on palpation in palpation now we start touching the patient we start examining the patient in the first part is tenderness tenderness is nothing but on point whether whenever you are pressing that particular part of the point and patient is complaining of pain that is called as tenderness tenderness can be present over the joints over the muscles anywhere in the body according to patient's injury and mechanism of injury so there are four grades of tenderness grade 1 is patient complains of pain when you are palpating it grade 2 is patient complains of pain and winces winces means patient makes faces facial expressions that is called as wincing grade 3 patient winces and withdraws the hand so patient will not uh, once you are pressing the point patient will have facial expressions as well as they, they will try to withdraw that particular part of the body because pain is in severe condition and grade 4 is patient will not at all allow you to palpate the part of the affected area so this is how we can grade the tenderness in whichever the area it is available next point in the palpation will be differentiating the tissue tension and texture so wherever the affected area patient is telling in that particular part what all areas are affected what is whether any tension is present in the tissues whether it is tight whether it is relaxed all those things we have to find out then temperature variation of the skin because most of the time where inflammation is present that time you will see that there will be warmth present so that temperature variation whether it is present or not that we have to find out spasm because most of the time in muscular injury muscle guarding happens so if a patient has come in the acute condition you have to look for the whether the muscle guarding or spasm is present or not in that particular area type of skin whether it is dry or excessive moisture most of the time whenever the immobilization is given plaster of paris is applied and when it is removed you will see that the dryness in the skin will be present because of the lack of environmental factors so that is commonly seen in those cases then scar whether it is adherent or non adherent as you can see here i have given one picture of uh, total knee replacement surgery in that you will see there is a scar of sutures present so once you put a index finger or thumb over the scar and try to move the scar and if it is moving over the underlying soft tissues it is called as non adherent scar and if it is moving along with the underlying soft tissues and it is difficult to move then it is adherent scar so this scar again it matters a lot when it comes to uh, bringing back the range of motion if it is non adherent scar range of motion can be brought very easily and if it is adherent first we have to work on the scar and then later on we can work on the range of motion moving forward swelling in palpation now swelling is nothing but accumulation of the fluid and it can be there it can be present because of many reasons so reasons i have given here if it is coming as soon as after the injury it can be because of blood accumulation if it is coming after 8 to 24 hours it can be because of synovial fluid accumulation if it is boggy spongy feeling then it can be because of synovial fluid accumulation if it is harder tense feeling with warmth then it is blood accumulation if it is tough and dry it can be because of callus formation then if it is leathery thickening then it can be because of chronic condition if it is like more than 3 months 4 months it is still present it becomes like a tough and dry or sorry leathery thickening uh, conditions then soft uh, fluctuating then it is because of the acute condition if it is hard extra bone formation it can be present then thick 
slow moving it can be pitting edema so these are the types of swelling that we can see observe palpate in the patient and the next part is crepitations crepitous sounds are abnormal sounds that comes from the joints because of articulating surfaces are damaged so it can be seen in two kind of population one is elderly population because of the articular cartilage has uh, has been uh, damaged and the bony particles bony fragments are coming together there is a friction and that sounds you are hear hearing and the another condition can be because of certain conditions or metabolic conditions of the bone which makes the bone very brutal and uh, like for example vitamin d deficiency calcium deficiency because of which there is a friction between two artic particles of the bone and which makes this abnormal sounds of the crepitus so this we can palpate over the joints and ask the patient to perform the movement and then we can uh, understand whether the crepitus is present or not next part is in examination part on examination once the palpation is done in examination we take first thing is vital signs in that pulse rate and respiratory rates are taken on the physiotherapy level just to identify that patient's condition is stable next is in motor assessment we take range of motion range of motion can be taken actively as well as passively now active it is taken when in that we have to find out when and where pain is starting whether the movement is increasing the pain or not pattern of movement whether it is occurring in normal pattern or patient is having a different pattern of movement because of pain then trick movements if patient is performing any trick movements to avoid pain that we have to identify in the active range of motion then the next is passive range of motion when and where pain starts again the same thing whether the movement increases the pain and what is the pattern of movement now this is taken to differentiate between the range of motion available in active and passive range now i'll give you one small example that whenever uh, there is problem in active range of the motion of the patient most of the time affected areas will be muscles and soft tissues and whenever there is a capsule and other structures around the joints are affected there will be problems in the passive range of motion like in frozen shoulder port patient we ask them to perform active range of motion they will be in different pattern because of the pain as well as range of motion will not be complete and another way when you are try trying to perform passive movements in the same patient the range of motion will be restricted because of the bone to bone or uh, capsular tightness as well as pain will be less when you are performing the passive movements because no uh, active structures like muscles and all are activated so this is how we can confirm that capsular pattern is more involved and that is why the condition of the patient is frozen shoulder and not relevant with the any other muscular injuries same way the next uh, thing is to find out is end feel so end feel is nothing but the end sensation that a physiotherapist gets when whenever the physiotherapist is performing passive range of motion in that particular joints so normally the end feel can be of three types it can be bone to bone like for example what we get in elbow extension soft tissue approximation like we get in elbow flexion tissue stretch like we get in most of the range of motion of shoulder joint an abnormal end feel can be early muscle spasm late muscle spasm then hard capsular soft capsular bone to bone empty end feel and springy block end feel in this empty end feel means uh, the stopping of the movements or range of motion because of the pain of the patient so whenever you are not getting actual end feel while performing the passive movement but patient is telling no to perform any extra range of motion because of pain that is called as empty end feel next part is capsular pattern we have to find out whether the capsular patterns are normal in all the direction because as i told you if capsules are tight again it can reduce the range of motion of the joint then comes the manual muscle testing rc grading is used in that five grades are there grade 1 means sorry first of all zero means there is no at all muscle contractions grade 1 means palpable muscle contractions are present grade 2 means full range of motion in gravity eliminated plane grade 3 is against gravity full range of motion 
Grade four is against gravity, full range of motion with minimum resistance, and grade five is against gravity, full range of motion with maximum resistance. Now, in this, the point comes that how to determine whether this is minimum resistance or maximum resistance. So, in that, two things can be done. Number one is we have to check on the unaffected area of the patient. If the patient's right side is affected, you check on the left side of the patient and look for the strength available in the patient. And according to that, you apply minimum and maximum resistance to that particular movements. Or else, second way of doing it can be the same age and same body weight patient strength we check and the same uh, resistance we apply on the affected parts of the patient. So this is applicable in the cases where patients, both the sides are affected so that we cannot determine how to give minimum resistance. Then we check it on the same age populations of the uh, person and then we apply it on the patient. Next is joint movements. We have to check in loose back position as well as close back position. Loose back position is something where the distal proximities are free and close back position, distal proximities are uh, it, it is not free, it is stuck and the movements occurs in the proximal components. So both of these are very important to identify which exact link is more affected, whether it is from the proximal side or whether it is from the distal side. Next part is sensory assessment. Now this sensory assessment is not applicable in each and every cases. But wherever we feel that there might be injury to the nerves or uh, nerve tissues, then in those cases, we have to take the sensory assessment. Sometimes also if patients chief complaint includes anything abnormal regarding the sensations, we have to take the sensory assessment. So in that superficial deep sensation and combined sensations are taken. In superficial sensations, we take pain, temperature, light touch and pressure. Deep sensation, we take movement sense which is also called as proprioception and position sense both of them are included in the joint proprioception then combined sensations can be stereognosis tactile localization and two-point discrimination again this two-point discrimination is varied according to the different parts of the body i'll give you a small example if you are checking it on the palm of the hand and dorsum of the hand both there's areas there is a difference in the normal two-point discrimination because of the sensations available in both the areas. So if you are taking it on the palm of the hand, we might have to make it a little bit uh, greater area and also of the hand because the skin is very thin, we can fill it with the smaller area of the uh, discrimination as well. as. Next is graphesthesia that also comes in the sensory assessment. Next portion is reflexes. Reflexes can be superficial as well as deep reflexes. Again, as I told you, this reflexes also can be taken whenever we feel that there is any neural involvement present in the patient. So superficial reflexes are taken from the corneal, which is taken near the corneal area of the eyes, then abdominal reflex, plantar reflex, and cremasteric reflex. And deep reflexes includes biceps, triceps, Babinski reflex, knee jerk, ankle jerk, as well as sometimes we can take brachioradialis reflex. And gradings of the reflexes are as follows. Zero means absent. One is diminished. Two is normal. Three is brisk. And four is exaggerated. So according to this grading, we can determine that whether the reflexes are normal or not. The next part is finding out the dermatomes and myotomes which are affected. Then uh, limb length discrepancy, limb length discrepancy, apparent and true limb length. Apparent means we are taking it from the soft tissue to the another soft tissue part or bone to soft tissue and true limb length is always bone to bone. So first the apparent limb length is taken in if anything is wrong with the apparent limb length then we check for the true limb length. And if the true limb length is normal, then we come to know that whatever the limb discrepancy is there, it is because of the postural malalignment or soft tissue malalignment. And if the true limb length also is affected, then we should conclude that it is because of the boning deformities or problems in the bone heights. Then comes the special test, which is the very special tool of physiotherapist. It is used according to the area which is involved. 
like for example if shoulder is involved then all the special tests related to the shoulder conditions like impingement then uh, biceps tendonitis it can be rotator cuff injury so all these conditions special tests can be performed to rule out the patient's current condition and find out the confirmed diagnosis the next part is functional assessment of the patient that whether uh, how is the ambulation of the patient whether patient is having independent gait or patient is wheelchair bound uh, then uh, for how the patient performs transverse activity all those things we have to take in the functional assessment next comes the gait assessment in that type of gait in observation if you remember we used to just observe whether if any abnormalities are present in the gait or not but in this now we are going to check stride length step length as well as what type of abnormal gait is present that every information we have to mention here then comes the pain assessment in that we take nprs scale and also we have to write down the uh, aggravating factors and relieving factors of the pain so that we can understand which all factors are there which are giving rest or uh, giving uh, pain reduction to the patient as well as we can include in this type of pain because sometimes type of pain also determines uh, up, up for us that which particular injury will be present if type of pain is sharp shooting it can be uh, related with the nerves or tissues if type of pain is pricking type of pain or uh, it is like a very uh, yes pricking type of pain then again it can be relevant with the uh, neural involvement or soft tissue damage in the particular area then the next thing comes is adl activities so adl activities is nothing but what is the patient status about performing the daily living activities like uh, sitting standing bathing uh, walking all these activities whether patient is able to perform or not that is included in the functional assessment then comes the investigation procedure in investigation procedure if there is any blood test done if there is any x ray mri ct scan whatever the investigations are done that we have to check and uh, identify the points then clinical impressions whatever the clinical examination clinical palpation observation whatever the impressions we have got those points we have to mention in here then differential diagnosis according to our special test what all the conditions could be present those all conditions we have to write down here and after that we have to find out uh, sorry we have to write down the findings to make final impressions that according to all this uh, investigations clinical impressions and differential diagnosis what all points are there which are leading us to a final diagnosis those all points we have to write down and then it comes that we have to mention the final diagnosis according to the phys physiotherapy uh, assessment next part is uh, once the diagnosis is done confirmed then we have to move forward to the treatment protocol in the treatment protocol first we have to determine our short term goals and long term goals short term goals mostly are according to the symptoms oriented so basically we have to reduce the pain of the patient we have to improve the range of motion for the patient all those things comes in the short term goals and long term goals includes functional status of the patient like uh, how patient used to work before the injury at same level of functional status we have to make the patient function that will be our long term goal in physiotherapy management next point that how to plan the treatment so treatment is planned in this four sessions first whether if there is any requirement of electric modalities then this electric modalities we have to mention in that also we have to mention for how much duration we are going to give that particular electrolytic uh, electric modalities in which particular part we are giving the electric modalities every detail we have to mention then manipulation so if there is any requirement of mobilization uh, muscle energy technique or another other manipulative techniques then that we have to mention for how much duration how many days we are going to give that we have to mention in that then exercise programs what all exercises patient has to perform for again how many repetitions then how many days from which day to which day patient has to perform that all information along with the exercise name we have to mention after that if there is any requirement of splints or assistive devices then that we have to mention and for how many days patient has to use those splints and assistive devices that also we have to mention 
and the next part comes the home exercise program which is again very important because after going from the physiotherapy center patient has to perform certain sets of exercises at home so that when the next day patient comes for the therapy we can advance the treatment and patient can get back to the normal position very easily so these are the uh, format this is the typical format that we are going to follow for uh, physiotherapy assessment program and once it is understood properly the concept is clear we can perform we can apply this assessment format very easily and in a quick duration so i hope you have liked and understood the concept of this assessment and if you still have any doubts you can let me know in the comment section and uh, where i can help you out and uh, thank you so much for watching this video please like share and subscribe to my channel physiotrends for more and more videos like this